Hi, welcome back to the Financial and Investment Education Channel. Bemvindo, Boa Tarde, Meu Amigos and Minha Amigas. Today I am going to talk about what exactly Bitcoin is. And uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about this recently. There seems to be a lot of confusion about the topic, how to acquire it, where it came from, who invented it, what exactly is its purpose. So I'm going to cover all that. So let's go. What is Bitcoin? Okay, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible, but I think I'd like to also include the important details and give a historic perspective of where Bitcoin came from as well. So just hang tight, I've written some notes here and uh, just to keep me on track and make sure I cover off everything. So what is Bitcoin? Basically Bitcoin is the first and most widely recognized cryptocurrency. It enables person to person uh, exchange of value. That is you can make transactions with it but over the digital realm only. So you can, it uses a decentralized protocol and actually gave birth to the block, blockchain when it was developed uh, back in 2009. So it uses cryptography. Now you may remember cryptography from World War II. There was codes and decoders and all that kind of stuff. So there's a, a mechanism to Bitcoin to achieve a global consensus on the state of periodically updated public transaction ledger and that's called the blockchain. So when you think about uh, Bitcoin it's completely transparent. It doesn't have your name attached to it necessarily but every transaction is recorded on this blockchain which could really be described as a fancy accounting method or an accounting procedure. Now there's a lot of people using blockchain today in several different applications. So in a way, Bitcoin gave growth to an entire new renaissance in technology that uses blockchain. Even logistics companies use the platform, or I sorry, uses blockchain for their platforms to track things. Uh, there's just a lot of interesting stuff. But let's not get distracted. Practically speaking, Bitcoin is a form of digital money that exists, first of all, independently of any government, state, or financial institution. And secondly, can be transferred globally without the need for a centralized intermediary. So for example, if you want to send some value from Brazil to Canada or from Canada to South Africa, you can go ahead and do that because when you're transferring Bitcoin or that value of Bitcoin from person to person, there's no middle person, there's no intermediary. So what happens is that uh, they'll receive it in seconds and uh, you don't have to rely on uh, PayPal or Visa, MasterCard or any banks to actually dump a bunch of fees and uh, slow down the process or possibly scrutinize it uh, unnecessarily. So it's a very quick way to get value from one person to another. It knows no boundaries. Okay, thirdly, it's uh, essentially a monetary policy as well that arguably can never be altered. The code has been written. There is a Bitcoin white page, and I'm going to link that in the description below. Please read it. It's pretty simple. At a deeper level, Bitcoin can uh, be described as a political or even a philosophical and economic system itself. This is thanks to the combination of the technical features. It integrates the wide array of participants and stakeholders it involves and the process for making changes to the protocol itself. So Bitcoin can refer to the Bitcoin can refer to the Bitcoin software protocol as well as to the monetary unit, which goes by the ticker symbol BTC. So 
A little historic uh, reference for you. Bitcoin was launched in 2009 in January by this group of technologists. Bitcoin is now a globally traded financial asset with daily settled volume measured in the tens of billions of dollars. Actually, as of today, the cryptocurrency universe is uh, worth two trillion US dollars. Okay, although its regulatory status is a little bit unknown at the moment, and it varies by region and country to country, etc., but it continues to evolve. Uh, Bitcoin has become something that cannot be ignored by uh, the authorities and the decision makers, policy makers around the world anymore. It's just gotten so big. Think about this. You could have bought one Bitcoin for one penny in 2009. That one Bitcoin today is 250,000 reais. Imagine. So, um, so let's move on here. Something very special happened recently. Um, you know, even though some people, some countries like China, for example, have started to become quite against Bitcoin, uh, especially the development or the creation of Bitcoins through a process called mining. Um, there's other countries, for example, El Salvador, that in June of 2021, which was just two months ago, became the first country to mandate Bitcoin as a legal tender. So it's been now integrated into their financial system. Pretty amazing stuff, actually. So the early growth of Bitcoin, the evolution of Bitcoin, how did it happen? Well, the white paper, which is linked in the description below, talks about Bitcoin, a person-to-person -person electronic cash system. What basically happened was after the financial collapse, there was several people cynical, skeptical of manipulation in the financial markets and decided to come up with this alternative currency, which was fully transparent and gave everybody the ability, the ability as long as they had access to a computer or a cell phone to have this value, this storage of value that Bitcoin represents. So the listed author uh, on the uh, creation of Bitcoin and the paper uh, is Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay, this is a pseudonym for a person or a group of people whose true identity remains a complete mystery. Nobody knows who the actual creator or group of people that created Bitcoin are. And I can understand why they would want to keep themselves private because what they did, they uh, kept 1 million Bitcoins for themselves. That would be worth huh, today's, well, 1 million times 250,000 reais. I'll have to calculate that and put it on, uh, the, I'll, I'll show it up here. So initial growth of the Bitcoin network was really driven by this kind of new method for transacting value in the digital world and enhancing technologies as a route to social and political change. However, speculation as to the future value of Bitcoin soon became a very significant driver of people wanting to get Bitcoin. People wanted to, people started to want to acquire Bitcoin and adopt Bitcoin and keep Bitcoin. So the price of Bitcoin and the number of Bitcoin users really increased over the following decade, so the last 10 years. As regulators and major economies provided clarity on the legality of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, a large number of Bitcoin exchanges established banking connections, making it easy to convert local currency to and from Bitcoin. So that's one way to actually participate in Bitcoin. Other businesses established robust custodial services 
making it easier for financial or institutional investors to gain exposure to the asset as a growing number of high profile investors signaled the internet. For example, uh, Michael Saylor with MicroStrategies, there's Elon Musk amongst uh, many, many other people. Um, so what I wanted to do now is talk about how can you acquire Bitcoin safely, easily, and securely? So how do you get Bitcoin? In the old days, uh, five, six, seven, eight years ago, you really had to do it yourself. You had to figure out uh, what an exchange was or how to mine Bitcoin digitally and take up a lot of electrical consumption. You had to go through quite a few steps and a lot of education in order to acquire Bitcoin. Luckily, here in Brazil, as of a couple of weeks ago, we have just launched a new Bitcoin ETF. An ETF is an exchange traded fund um, and you can access Bitcoin and buy it safely and securely through my institution, which is the biggest investment bank in South America. So safe, <laughs> totally legit. And uh, I'll link that down below uh, procedure to do that. And uh, I'm going to make a completely different video in a day or two and I'm going to go into a little more detail of how that works but in the meantime please subscribe to the channel send me a like on the video and go ahead uh, in the description below open yourself an account there's no obligation you don't have to deposit any money and then we can get started and I can contact you directly and get you on your pathway to being a cryptocurrency owner Thank you for joining me today and have yourself a fantastic rest of the day and rest of the week and we'll see you really soon.